Now let us talk about games between policymakers. Yesterday we talked about games which policymakers play with voters. Now we are talking about games between policymakers. So suppose there are two political parties. I am one political party and you are the another political party. And our country is facing a deficit. Our, the government's income is less than the government's spending. And we understand this, that we have to reduce uh, the deficit. Now, one of the political party or the ruling party, you can say, would want to decrease spending. Right. Opposition doesn't want this. I mean, this is against spending cuts. This is against spending cuts. Now, what this ruling party can do is, ruling party knows that it is not very easy for us to reduce this spending uh, because opposition is... Uh, going to make a lot of noise about it. So what we should rather do is ruling party says we want to decrease uh, deficit now. So we will rather reduce taxes. Now you will say what kind of game is this? Because when taxes are going to be reduced, our uh, income is getting reduced, right? When income is getting reduced, our deficit is becoming larger. Deficit is becoming even larger. Now just think about it. The other political party can't say that the ruling party, what it is doing, it has reduced uh, the taxes. Because the moment the opposition says that the ruling party has reduced taxes, People will think that what kind of opposition is this? Um, government is trying to do better for us and uh, they are opposing it. So they can't say anything. Uh, opposition can't say anything. It is very difficult to oppose reduction in taxes. One thing. The point is when the taxes are going to be reduced, a deficit is becoming even larger. Then in future also, right? When the other party is going to come, it will also have to, uh, it will know that uh, the only way we can reduce the taxes is by reduction in spending. Uh, so better is to allow the, the ruling party to reduce spending right now. You Are you getting the game the way it is getting played? Uh, so the in this case, Ruling party and the opposition, which Blankert writes as the future parties in power. <clears throat> this is going to force them. to reduce spending. This is going to reduce them to reduce spend. Uh, this is going to force them to reduce spending. So you understand the kind of the game which has happened. Or let us say there is a ruling party and there is an opposition. One of the party wants, one side wants to reduce deficit by in, uh, increase in taxes. One party wants reduction in deficit by reduction in spending. Both of them wants to reduce deficit, but the way they want to reduce, reduce deficit is different. So uh, they are disagreeing about, they disagree, both of them. 
disagree about. The ways to reduce deficit. So let's say the ruling party wants to reduce deficit by increasing taxes. And the opposition wants to reduce spending, uh, reduce deficit by reduction in spending. And mind you, I mean, people uh, don't like either of them. They neither like decrease in spending nor they like increase in taxes. Voters, they don't like. Uh, so now the point is that both parties they would want to hold that the other party do something first and then they will react, right? They do not want to be the first one to do it because the moment they increase taxes, it is going to give the um, a, a, a wrong signal to the people. Uh, they are increasing taxes. Pe people have a reactionary voice. Uh, so uh, generally, uh, everyone wants to think only of their own problem, but not for the country at large. These policymakers, they are seeing the problems at a macro level, what the problems are. You and I just think at our own level. So we do not want increase in taxes. And the moment ruling party does that, then opposition will say something. Or the other party does uh, the decrease in spending, then the, or then the other party is going to say, oh, just see they have reduced the taxes. Uh, just see they have... Uh, uh, reduce spending. We were saying that uh, reduction in spending is very bad because in case of the government spending is going to be reduced, employment is going to be reduced, who will employ these people, their income is going. So those things, right? So uh, both parties, please write. You have to understand the games which they are playing. Both parties may hold out the hope that the other Will give in first. That the other side will give in first, right? Uh, and when the deficits they become really large, and when nothing could be done, some harsh decisions they have to be taken. Then the decision is taken, right? They one of the party actually gives up, and uh, they they take up the decision. Only when the debt has increased sufficiently And it becomes urgent to reduce deficits. Will one party give up? So this is these are called wars of attrition. So the hope that the other side uh, 
will give and leads to long and often very costly delays, right? Uh, so deficit reduction generally happens after very long when much of the damage has already been done. So when the governments, they are actually looking at the problem and they keep on delaying uh, taking up the decision to correct the deficit and they take up the decision when it becomes like really out of the hand. Uh, so wards of attrition arise uh, in the hyperinflation context also. So, and when do hyperinflation, they occur when there is, uh, for example, um, when you have very large uh, deficits, government has very large deficits and government needs money. So government might ask central bank to buy a print money, right? And, uh, or to finance uh, uh, this, uh, this deficit uh, by, by money creation. So the money supply increases in the market. People have more money, they spend more, and hence uh, the inflation occurs a lot, right? Uh, so there, these wars of attrition, they come up. Uh, so, but the, see, it's, it's not that the policymakers, they don't understand that it is important to reduce the deficits from early on, but they keep on waiting till uh, actually it becomes very large. I mean, they, because the moment they take a harsh step for the economy, uh, uh, many political parties, I mean, they always think in this way, many, many policymakers think that the voter uh, will not be re-electing them. So they do not want to take a very harsh decisions. And increase in taxes is harsh on voters. The reduction in government spending is harsh on voters. But these are the harsh decisions which have to be taken up to balance the economies, to stabilize the economy, to reduce the deficits. So generally, these stabilization programs, that is um, to reduce the deficit, uh, those things, they come up only after inflation has reached a very high level. Inflation has reached very high level and uh, that economic activity is also severely affected. So you don't need to write all that, but um, these are the few examples which you can give the games which the policymakers are. Playing. So one of the example in which we have given the ruling party very cleverly tries to decrease taxes because it knows that it is reducing taxes. It is going to create deficit. They will have to, this is going to create even bigger deficit even in the future these deficits could be reduced only by reduction in spending. That is the only way. So there the voice of opposition is uh, going to be mellowed down because of that. So that's a game which the ruling party is going to play. Or they can also do one thing that they can, they can wait for the other party to move or to do something. Then they can say, Let's, we've told you that uh, they were up to it. So let, let's say ruling party increases taxes, then it becomes the opposition's case that just see, I mean, they are increasing taxes. They are not doing uh, a welfare for the economy. So those things. So these are the wars of attrition. So they are, and, and they do all of that only when the situation has become severe. They should have taken up the stabilization program. When why, why I'm saying stabilization, stabilization every time, because these deficits are destabilizing the economy. So these deficits have to be controlled. But the problem is that this these stabilization programs they are taken up only when the situation has gone really out of hand. So these are the different games which the policymakers play. Right, Shelly, this is what I wanted to do in this class. Thank you, Vita.